started looking at a hydraulic trolley jack and got to thinking it'd be a good physics video. In this video, we'll be going over the hydraulic trolley jack and how it works and the physics behind hydraulics. In previous videos, we went over other simple machines. So let's begin by going over how a hydraulic trolley jack works. The way the hydraulic trolley jack works is you pump the lever arm, which is a second class lever. This lever drives down the small piston which pumps hydraulic fluid through a one-way valve, also known as a check valve. After the lever is raised again, more fluid is allowed to go into the small piston cylinder. The hydraulic fluid pressure builds up in a chamber with the large piston until the pressure is great enough to push up on the load arm of the jack. We talked about levers in a previous video, so I'm going to concentrate on the hydraulic portion of the trolley jack. So let's say we have a small piston with a diameter of 12.7 millimeters and has a 10 millimeter stroke. This piston is connected to a large piston which has a diameter of 25.4 millimeters. How far will the large piston move after the small piston strokes down 10 millimeters? To solve this problem, we can take the volume of the small piston stroke and divide by the area of the large piston. Doing unit analysis, we see that dividing volume by the area gives us the desired units of millimeters length. So after plugging in our numbers, we notice that we really are just taking the stroke length times the diameter squared of the small piston over the diameter squared of the large piston. All other numbers cancel out. In this example, it results in a stroke distance at the large piston of 2.5 millimeters. So the displacement is reduced to a quarter of the small piston's displacement. Now, what have we learned from previous Simple Machine videos about what happens when the displacement is reduced? That's right, the force is increased. In this example, if we take the diameter of the large piston squared over the diameter of the small piston squared, we get the mechanical advantage. Note, we really are taking the area over the area, but all numbers except for the diameter squared get cancelled out. In this case, we have a mechanical advantage of 4. This means that whatever force you put on the small piston will be multiplied by 4 at the big piston. This greater force on the piston comes at the cost of having less displacement. The way this works is that the fluid is evenly distributing the pressure. Being there is a larger area on the large piston, more area is affected by the pressure. Completing unit analysis, we can see that taking the area times the pressure, we are left with force. That concludes this video. Hopefully I earned a like, share, or subscription.